So when taking a look at a problem like this we were looking at, um, identifying what values a and b that the function is differentiable. So again, we've talked about looking at this absolute value function. We've talked about a function can be continuous from the left and right hand side, but not differentiable from the left hand side. So therefore, what we're going to want to do is check to first make sure it's continuous from the left hand side, and then also make sure we check that it's um, differentiable from the left hand side. So the first thing we can do is check continuity. Again, for those of you that are walking in, if you remember from last week, a function is only differentiable if it is continuous at those values. Well, we could see it, there could be a possible break in this graph at 1. So we need to check to make sure it's continuous. So I'd say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, which is 3 minus x, has to equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, which is ax squared plus bx. Well, again, we're checking this limit as x approaches a 1. So I could do 3 minus 1 has to equal a times 1 squared plus b times 1. So therefore, we have uh, 2 equals a plus b. So that is one equation. We know that for whatever values a and b, um, there's, mul there's infinite many values for a and b that the function can be continuous. But a function can be continuous and non-differentiable at a point. Remember, a function is non-differentiable. We talked about not only is it when it's discontinuous, but if there is a cusp or if there is a, um, a corner, right? for instance, in this case. So we need to make sure that the left and right hand limits of the derivative are also equivalent. So I'm going to check left and right hand der uh, derivatives. Because you can see. Um, sometimes, even if it's continuous, the left and right hand derivatives do not exist. So I'm going to take the limit of x approaches 1 from the left of the derivative of this function, which is just going to be negative uh, 1. And that's equal to the limit. Actually, you don't know, see. Let's do it like, yeah, yeah. Of negative 1 is equal to uh, the derivative of the or limit as x approaches 1 from the positive, which is 2ax plus b. Then I plug in for 1 in for x, which I'm taking the limit of. OK. Does everybody follow me? So now I have two equations. But the question is asking, what are the values a and b that make the function differentiable? So i got to solve for a and b. So then I go back to my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 days, and I write a system of equations. You can subtract the bottom row from the top row. Just make sure you follow the same operation. 2 minus a negative 1 is going to be a positive 3 a minus 2a is going to be a negative a, and b minus b is going to equal 0b. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, a is equal to negative 3. Now that I know what the value of um, a is, which is negative 3, I need to find the value of b, so I could plug it into any one of these equations. Let's just do 2 equals negative 3 plus b. Add 3 to both sides, 5 is equal to b. So therefore, for the values of a is negative 3 and b is 5, my function um, is differentiable, or that function is differentiable. Because not only is it continuous, but the derivative from the left and right hand side are equal.